Welcome to video number four covering chapter two in your computer systems textbook everyone. In this video we'll cover section three of chapter two and we'll be talking about integer arithmetic. Specifically we'll take a look at the addition, negation, multiplication, and shifting of integers. With unsigned addition we just add our integers and discard the carry bits. The standard addition function performs modular arithmetic. This is a lot like performing an addition and then truncating the carry bit. Remember that we talked about how truncation basically performs a mod operation in section 2.2. This works in the same way. If we drop the w highest order bits from our result, it has the effect of performing a mod 2 to the w on the result. So something to keep in mind is that if the result of our unsigned addition overflows, we end up performing modular arithmetic. 2's complement addition has the same bit level behavior as unsigned addition. So, at the bit level, 2's complement addition is quite simple. Just perform the addition, drop the carry bit, and treat the result as a normal 2's complement signed integer. However, this can end up with our signs doing things that we need to be aware of. Row 1 shows us a case in which the overflow bit is a 1, and dropping it changes the sign and the value of our result. Negative 8 plus negative 5 actually results in negative 13, but by dropping the carry bit we end up with an answer of positive 5. The second row shows a case that actually acts as we expect. The carry bit is dropped, but because the carry bit and the most significant bit of the truncated bit vector are both 1, we actually end up getting the negative 3 we would expect from adding negative 8 and positive 5. Finally, row 3 shows us an example of two positive numbers adding to a negative number, because of the overflow. The carry bit is a zero, but dropping it means that our most significant bits ends up being a one, resulting in a negative answer to adding two positive numbers. When programming, we always have to be aware of the effects of overflow on the answers we get from our programs. If we're not careful, we could definitely get some very unexpected results. Negation is fairly straightforward. It is not applicable to unsigned numbers, of course, and we can negate two's complement numbers quite easily. You can see the full derivation of this technique in section 2.3.3 on page 95 of your book, but the application just involves complementing the bits and adding one to the result. This table shows some examples of this in action. Multiplication works very much the same way as addition, except we may end up truncating quite a few more bits when we're done. So to maintain exact results, we would need to keep expansion of our word size every time we implement a multiplication. It is, of course, not practical to try to do that directly, but we can do that kind of thing in software if we need to. Uh, many computer algebra systems, for example, such as Maple and Mathematica, support arbitrary precision calculations. So, what does this mean for us? Simply that, as with addition, C implements modular arithmetic with multiplication. Since we drop our highest order W bits, we effectively get an answer that is equivalent to the product of the two operands, mod 2 to the w. Sign multiplication works the same on the bit level. Again, we just discard the bits that overflow and interpret the result as a 2's complement number. Now, let's take a look at using shifts to multiply and divide. We can multiply by a power of 2 using a left shift. This works the same with both signed and unsigned integers. If we shift an integer u by k bits, the result is the same as u times 2 to the k. So, if we left shift u by 3 bits, we end up with u times 8. We can multiply by non-powers of 2 by combining shifts and adds slash subtractions. We can get u times 24 by shifting u by 5, giving us 32u, then subtracting u left shifted by 3, or 8u. We don't have to multiply by even numbers either. We could get u times 15 by shifting u by 4, which is 16u, and subtracting u from that, yielding 15u. Most machines shift and add faster than directly multiplying, so this is very handy. Now compilers generate this code for us automatically, so we generally don't have to do this directly, but we want to make sure we understand how it works. Now a right shift gives us division by a power of 2. So shifting left gives us multiplication, shifting right gives us division. Um, 
Shifting integer u by k bits to the right gives us u divided by 2 to the power of k. We always use a logical shift to do an unsigned power of 2 divide with a shift. In this case, the bits that get dropped off are the lowest order bits that would end up to the right of the binary point. The binary point, by the way, is just like the decimal point in base 10. So, since integers don't have fractional values, we just drop the bits that get shifted past the least significant bit. This table shows some results of a right shift divide by power of 2. Assigned power of 2 divide with shift gets a little more complicated. It works mostly the same as with unsigned, but we use an arithmetic shift in order to preserve the sign of the integer. It also rounds in the wrong direction when x is less than 0. We want our results to round toward 0, but as you can see from the table, they actually round down or away from 0 in every case when our integer x is negative. We can fix this by adding a bias to our integer. We add 2 to the k minus 1 to our integer x, which has the effect of adding 1 to the final result of an operation if the x is negative. The bias of 2 to the k minus 1 ends up looking like a mask of length k that contains all 1s. So if we shift by 4, we end up adding a bias of 15, or 1, 1, 1, 1. If we shift by 8, we add a bias of 255, 8 bits of all 1s. Read about the principles and derivations of this in section 2.3.7 of your book. You can find the treatment of two's complement rounding starting on page 105. And that does it for our quick review of integer arithmetic. The next video will start to cover how floating point numbers are stored as bits.